was when I came out. <laughs> Gene, uh, let's start with you. Uh, what was college basketball like when you returned from, from military service? Well, it was a lot different than it is now. Uh, the three-point rule has really changed the game. I think the uh, idea to hustle and do your best is still there, though. Yeah, yeah. And you played for Bill Chandler? Yes. Mm -hmm. And why did, why did you choose to come to Marquette and play for Coach Chandler? I was uh, in a service, I played at Cornell University, and uh, then <clears throat> when I came back, uh, I decided well, that was a time when there were a lot of coaches in, in different colleges. And uh, I had 20 different offers to go to different schools. Wow. And I decided to go to Marquette because originally when I got out of high school, I wanted to go to Wisconsin. That's not good news, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, uh, I attempted that. And they said, come on out and try to make the team. Of course, I wasn't too impressive being under six foot compared to the way the players are now. So I uh, uh, said, maybe I'm, I talked to some friends of mine who I played with during the summer on the playgrounds, and uh, they said they would, they would get me into Marquette. I said, great, get me into anywhere. <laughs> so. So that's how I started at Marquette. <laughs> then when I got out of the service, I owed it to Bill Chandler, who helped me when I needed help, and I came back to Marquette. And Russ, you played for what was the youngest coach in college basketball at the time. You played for Tex Winter, didn't you? Yeah, Tex Witter was 29, and uh, he was the youngest coach at the time, but he looked like 15. He, was, <laughs> uh, he really was a very young looking. Right now, he's, he's uh, celebrating his 95th uh, year, but uh, yes. But uh, he, he came to Marquette as uh, he was going to make things really different. And so he came and, and uh, he, he got eight freshmen. He hired eight of the best freshmen and uh, uh, that year went to the, w one of the three championships that Marquette has won postseason, the National Catholic Invitational Tournament. That was in 1952. <laughs> yes, and uh, we went to that and actually they won it, so that was, Really nice for a tech. So I played just two years for him, and then, <coughs> then he went back to Kansas State. What stood out to you about that that '52 championship team? Of that, of which championship? The, yeah, the, the the Catholic championship. The NCIT. Well, it was um, first of all, was a, what stood out is that my brother and I played together. <laughs> <laughs> That's just for me. Uh, no, but <laughs> but he uh, uh, rather uh, what stood out was that. Uh, it was the last year that that tournament could exist because the other two tournaments were taking most of the places and they, it just was not a, uh, uh, it ended, that was the end of the term of that year, but it was a great tribute to Tex Winter at that point to have gotten Marquette to not only into it, but to the, win the championship. And John, when you were playing, you were, you were known as a hook shot artist. And I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what that means, should I ask a... But there, there doesn't seem to be hook shots like you shot them back then. What, what, was, uh, what was your hook shot like? Well, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. First of all, let's be clear. Uh, the best hook shooters in the history of the program was Russ Whitberger here and Mike Moran, who uh, played... Uh, he was our 6'8 center and uh, played uh, uh, in the late 50s. Uh, both of them are top 20 all-time scorers. And Mike holds the uh, single game scoring record to this day of 44 points. It was set 60 years ago. Welcome to the ancient warrior 
Yeah. Um, so those were the, the two best hook shooters of all time. I dabbled in it. What, like, what were coaches like back then? Uh, practice as long? Were they screamers? How, how, how did they act? Well, Jack Nagel was a very uh, even-tempered person. He was a great recruiter. Um, that was his real strong point. Um, before we moved into the Milwaukee Arena in, in December of 1955 from the old gym, the Clyburn Street Gymnasium, where Marquette had played its games for the previous 30 or 35 years, uh, prior to that time, most of our recruiting was done locally within a 100-mile radius of the, of the city of Milwaukee. And um, once uh, Jack Nagel got a hold of that new arena, he went out nationwide and recruited uh, a great deal, a uh, number of outside players, Mike Moran being the chief one. He was equivalent to a McDonald All-American at that time. But he brought in another five, six people to blend with the local people that uh, he had recruited. And uh, Jack Nagel put the Marquette program on the national stage for the first time. During the 1950s, we were ranked three different times in Russ's year of 55. In 56, uh, part of the time we were ranked, in, in Don's first year, we were ranked uh, in the top 10, I think we got that year. Um, and also in Russ's year, we were in the top 10. And in 56, we were ranked in the top 10 for a short period of time. And Don, backstairs, you, uh, backstairs, backstage, you were telling me a story uh, on the stairs about uh, a call that you received recently from a, from a sports writer. You want to share that with, uh, with our audience? Well, I, I got a call from a fellow uh, sports writer, and uh, he called and he said, did you know that you were the only philosophy major that ever played in the NBA? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, uh, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> But it was an interesting comment. I'm sure, I'm sure Coach Hickey reminded you, I rebound, therefore I am. Yeah. Well, Ed Hickey looked up to me. You <laughs> do. <laughs> so does Coach Wojciechowski. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't caught on by now? You're going to get upset at that one? <laughs> well, when you think back on what it, what it means to be... Uh, a Marquette Warrior, a Marquette Golden Eagle now. What, what, what does it mean to you? Well, uh, I, as I travel around the country and everything else, I, I hear Marquette's name all the time, and it's, there's a lot of reverence with it and uh, a lot of respect for the Marquette basketball program. And that's kind of nice because they, they ask where you went to school because uh, they don't know who you are. And <laughs> where'd you go to school? And I tell them Marquette University. and they. Common always is, well, that's a great university and a great basketball program. How about the rest of you? What, 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 are, your thoughts on, what are your thoughts on what Marquette has meant to you, and especially playing basketball here at Marquette? I did a lot of officiating. I worked in the Big Ten, Big East, but I always looked around and I said, boy, I went, I'm glad I went to Marquette. It was a kind of a, yeah. something I wanted. No, I think, Jay, that uh, tonight is, is very indicative of what it means to have played at Marquette. I mean, all these people, it just uh, takes your breath away. But I find when I go out, and I, I mentioned to somebody I went to Marquette, the only thing that they'll say, did you play basketball? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that, that's not at all demeaning of this wonderful, fine institution. But there's no question that basketball is an absolute continuing part of its importance. When you look at the, when you see the film of your teams playing, what, what, what comes to mind when you see that? Well, I, I think back at uh, the days before the 32nd, uh, the, the clock, and the, <clears throat> way back, there was a, I think there was just a lot more um, planning uh, on plays and so forth. Uh, today's, it's, uh, it's, it's great. They're very, very good, very talented. Uh, I just, uh, I can still hold the, like this group here. They, 
They could hold their own probably today. <laughs> Except as long as they didn't have to walk. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking that's a note we should end it on. <laughs> but gentlemen, uh, I'd like to thank you not only for your service to Marquette University, but for your time this evening and uh, and sharing. You know, sharing your stories from your career and your era, uh, and also want to thank you for not wearing the shorts that you wore back then. Uh, it's a wonderful public service you've done for all of us. Let's hear it for the first era of Marquette basketball.